battery charger is not working and we took it apart, really the first thing that we notice is that the capacitor looks like it's bulging out. And electrolytic capacitors, of all the types of capacitors, are the most likely to uh, fail over time and use. And I believe there's it's just gas pressure buildup inside here that's causing it to bulge. Uh, and over, if, if, if abused too much, they'll even explode or, or smoke. Um, this one hasn't, but it still may not be functional. And it's very common in a lot of different types of electronics for this to be the reason why the whole system fails. Now, the reason is because the capacitor is a critical component in the power supply circuit, which converts the AC voltage from the wall to something that we can charge battery to a DC, a steady DC uh, voltage that of course we charge the battery with. And uh, there's also a rectifier in there um, and the transformer. And those are like the major components of that circuit. Well, if the capacitor's not working, it's not able to store energy uh, while the alternating voltage is in the, you know, it's on the downward slope or it, it, alternating voltage, um, you know, it, it, it's like a sine wave. It constantly is changing, increasing in voltage, decreasing in voltage. When it's decreasing in voltage, the capacitor needs to be there to, to continue to provide, um, to keep the voltage up whenever the line voltage is dropping. Anyway, uh, we try to save capacitors uh, when we can, just in case, you know, since they break so often. In this case, we didn't find one that we really liked. Uh, this is a 200 volt, 390 microfarad. The closest that looks like we've got is a 220 microfarad, and if you choose a capacitor with this, it's a lower capacitance, uh, what likely will happen is Whenever you start charging the battery, the system will not be able to keep up with the amount of current. And instead of providing 12 volts, it may only provide eight or something, or it'll pulse on and off or something weird. Um, so you really need the capacitor to be big enough that it can smooth out all the ripples. All right, so this is a computer power supply. It's fairly old and we've got several, so. I don't really have a problem taking it apart. Now, a computer power supply uh, has a very similar job as a battery charger, and you'll actually find that many of the components are the same. Um, I'm gonna be careful as I work around these capacitors. Even though it probably has been years since this has been used, a good capacitor will store its charge uh, indefinitely, uh, ideally. Um, even after it's been powered down, and it's just a good safety thing. So, all the screws removed, actually, almost all the screws removed. It, okay, you'll notice that, you just sort of look around for similar components. One of them, of course, are the capacitors, and then we also have the transformer, just step it down and voltage, and there should be a diode pack around here, or maybe just those four diodes. They may have uh, used discrete diodes instead of a diode pack. All right, before I get too far along, I'm going to discharge the capacitors with a screwdriver. Sometimes I will use a resistor to slow down the current and make it not spark. Um, but since it's a pretty old unit and I'm not actually anticipating anything too exciting, I'm just gonna go ahead with my screwdriver. So that one was totally dead. There's no sparking going on. The other one still could, so I'm gonna be cautious. And that one is also dead. So at this point, I feel safe that I can remove the circuit and unsolder the capacitors, or actually, um, I really only need to take off one capacitor. So 
So my technique, if there are a lot of pins on the component you're trying to remove, uh, it's good to have a, a solder sucker or even what's better is actually a, well sometimes a hot air gun. Um, that will melt all the solder in the area or also their special tool that's like a soldering iron except it's got a hole in the middle and it will suck air through the hole but all around it it's like a hollow soldering iron um, and that is useful as well but what I'm doing is just simply um, since there's only two pins I can heat up one side and get it loose and then apply a little bit of pressure and wiggle the the capacitor to one side and then allow the solder to cool so now it's stuck in that tilted angle and I'll hit the other side and heat, heat it up and then it should pivot back the other way and now it's, you can see it's actually coming off of the board as I wiggle it back and forth and so it looks like this pins fully removed I should just have to touch this and it will come off completely and sometimes uh, it looks like there's a little bit of glue on here. I've seen this done a lot on power supplies. It's just a measure, another measure that it doesn't like break loose, I guess, and start sparking. Um, they take a lot of care when building these units that are going to be used uh, in production. So now I'm ready to remove the bad capacitor. And I'll probably use the same technique that I removed the other one from the computer power supply. And if you are taking apart one of these units, they have hidden screw holes under the sticker. Uh, just one of those things that is hard to know from the outside until you've done it once. So again, before I get in there with the iron, I'm going to discharge this capacitor even though it's bad, especially because it's bad, and we were using it recently. So this one is already fully discharged. Since I'm going to use the wiggle technique, I'm just going to clip the leads off. I mean, we're going to throw away the capacitor anyway. It's, it's a bad capacitor, so I'm not going to be soldering it to anything. And this will make it so I don't have to uh, do as many iterations. I'm going to add a little solder. You may have noticed me do this on the other board too, uh, especially on old solder joints. Um, I find that it, it helps to add a little bit of fresh solder to help the heat flow better. All right, so I can put some downward pressure on this, not too much on the first, the first uh, time around because the capacitor is sitting flat against the circuit board and it really won't want to wiggle much. And it's not until you actually get it off the board some that it's going to allow itself to move. Okay, you felt that pin just drop out. So once it's down to one pin, or almost drop out, I think it just touch it once more. There we go. A puffed up top of an electrolytic capacitor is a sure sign of failure. It's a good idea to, of course, check the capacitor before you pull out where this negative stripe is but if you didn't happen to usually the board is marked for whenever people are assembling it to make it easier and in this case there's a little plus sign on the uh, this direction of that pin and the stripe goes on the opposite side of that because the stripe indicates minus uh, so the capacitor will be seated like this. If I can just get the pins to line up. It's pretty close to fitting, but there's a little bit of solder buildup, just an odd shape that's making it not want to go through. And I can just remelt the solder and get it to pull up again and sit more flat. So I've got the capacitor kind of seated in. So now I just have to re-add solder. not in a hurry. I'm going to make sure that we get a nice connection here. There probably will be a lot of current going through these joints, so you want them to be 
solid. With any component, um, even though I say I'm not in a hurry, I don't want to have the iron on there for too long, uh, like more than 10 seconds, just because um, the capacitor itself, if it starts to heat up too much, you could damage to the inside, or that's with just about any component. Um, so you just solder, you know, long enough to see everything flow, and then maybe just a touch longer. So I'm liking that. Again, I'm gonna verify I got the polarity correct, which I did. So if that was the only thing wrong with this unit, then we should be able, it should work. And this unit has two screws that go in from the top, and on the other side, those screws actually go in from the bottom. Hey, it looks like we have a battery charger again.